Our next topic is a bit like the cash cycle in that it's a part of the course, but it's not actually listed in the course. So the cash cycle was where we add together our debtors turnover and our stock turnover, but it wasn't actually listed as a ratio that we need to know. The DuPont formula is very similar because what it does is it looks at both the efficiency and the profitability of a business. And it starts on the premise that return on assets is a really important ratio. And we calculate it by net profit divided by average assets. However, there's also a mathematical relationship between return on assets and an asset turnover ratio uh, multiplied by net profit margin, whereby if we multiply together asset turnover and net profit margin, so multiply these two together for a business, it will always equal its return on assets. So using an example, if we took sales divided by average assets, we'd get asset turnover. And if we took net profit divided by sales, we get net profit margin. Well, when we multiply those together, uh, the sales numbers would actually cancel each other out. So that leaves uh, just net profit over average assets, which is actually the formula for return on assets. So the mathematical basis behind it is that by uh, multiplying those two ratios together, we'll get ROA anyway. So what does it mean? So if we take asset turnover by net profit margin, we're saying how effective is the business at turning each dollar of assets into sales? That was our asset turnover. But the problem with that ratio was we might be good at generating a lot of sales with every asset that we have, but we don't know how much profit we're making. We could generate a lot of sales if we lower the price of everything to a dollar. We're not, still not going to make a profit though, no matter how many items we sell. So what we'd like to look at and multiply that number by is the net profit margin. How much net profit is actually made on each sale? So the net DuPont formula, if we think about it, with starting with the asset turnover, it starts with the notion that we have a dollar of assets and a business will use those to generate sales. So let's say that is four dollars. I've got an asset turnover of four times. So for every dollar of assets, we're getting four dollars of sales. Well, the problem with that number is we don't know whether we made a profit on those sales or if we did make a profit, how big it was. So what we'd like to do is also look at the net profit margin. And to do that, we'll say, well, if four dollars of sales go into the income statement, take out our cost of goods sold, that'll give us a gross profit margin. Let's say it's uh, cost of goods sold of a dollar eighty and gross profit of two twenty. Take out our other expenses of a dollar forty. We are left with a net profit of eighty cents. So between those two formulas, we can see how good are we at generating sales, and just as importantly, are we actually making a profit on every one of those sales? So uh, by multiplying those two numbers together, we're kind of getting the best of both worlds. We're looking at how effective we are at using our assets to make sales, and how much profit we're making on each sale. To use an example to back up and prove that this all does balance and work, we've got firm A and firm B, and we've listed their sales, their net profit, and their average assets. So starting with asset turnover, we calculate that as sales divided by average assets. So for firm A, that'll be 100 divided by 50, which is 2.0. And for firm B, that'll be 200 divided by 50, which is 4.0. So just based on that ratio, we can see that Firm B is more efficient at turning its assets into sales than Firm A is. A good analogy here would be the difference between, say, Maya and the reject shop. So Maya is a business that doesn't have to sell as much stock as the reject shop in order to survive, whereas the reject shop has to sell a lot of goods. And the reason why they're very different in having to do that is because of our next ratio, which is the net profit margin. We calculate that by net profit divided by sales. Now for firm A, that'll be 10,000 divided by 200,000, we are 100,000, which is 10%. And for firm B, that'll be a net profit of 10,000 divided by sales of 200, which is 5%. And this demonstrates a really good point. We can see if I'm the reject shop underneath here, I have to generate a lot of sales because I don't make much profit on each one. I generate $4 of sales for every asset that I have, but I'm only making a net profit of 5% on each sale. This business here would be representative of Maya. It doesn't have to generate as many sales, and the reason why is because it makes more net profit on each sale. So to prove that the DuPont formula works, we'll now go and calculate return on assets, which is net profit divided by average assets. So looking at firm A, we'll do 10,000 divided by 50,000 is 20%. And for firm B, we'll look at net profit of 10,000 divided by 50,000 of assets for 20%. It's actually worked out identical. And the reason why is because of this DuPont formula. These businesses are equally as successful in providing a return on assets. They just do it in very different ways. 
Firm A manages to do it by not selling fewer uh, uh, items of inventory or turning assets into fewer sales and making a higher profit on each one and that'll lead to a return on assets of 20%. Firm B can still earn a return on assets of 20% even though it doesn't make as much profit on each sale, it only earns a net profit margin of 5%, it is turning its assets into sales of $4 for every time they have a dollar of assets. So 4 times 5 is 20 and 2 times 10 is 20. We've got two businesses who end up in the same place just based on different business models. And that's the value of the DuPont formula. You can see how a business decides to run, whether it wants to sell a lot of goods or not as many. And secondly, for each of those sales, are we a business that likes to make high margins on each sale and only have to sell a few items? Or do we have to sell a lot of items and make a really small profit on each one? The reason we need to know this is because while it's not listed in the study design, we could get questions where we need to know it. So looking at this question here from the 2010 exam, we were given the return on assets and the asset turnover for three years, and then asked, explain how the uh, return on assets can increase, but your asset turnover decreased. So the easiest way to answer this would be to understand the DuPont formula. The return on assets must equal asset turnover by net profit margin. Now you're never expected to calculate ratios, you wouldn't have got any marks for doing so. But we're just going to calculate it because in this case it will help us understand uh, how this business actually increased its ROA despite selling fewer goods for every dollar of asset. And we can do that by saying in 2013 if ROA was 14% and asset turnover was 1.5, well applying a bit of mathematics to it, net profit margin must have been 9.3%. In 2014, that went up to 15%, but we actually sold fewer goods. We actually didn't generate as many sales as the previous year for uh, every dollar of assets. So based on that, our net profit margin on each sale must have been higher. It was 11.5%. In 2015, we got ROA to go up to 17%, but the asset turnover was only 1.2. So applying some uh, mathematics, we'll get a net profit margin of 14.2%. And now we can actually answer this question. We're not expected to give the numbers. We don't need to be able to calculate them. But knowing the DuPont formula helps us understand that we were able to increase the amount of profit made on each sale from 9.3% to 14.2%. And this compensated for the fact that we were able or only able to generate fewer sales for every dollar of assets over the same period. The net result was that we sold less, but because we made more profit on each one, we actually became a more profitable business based on our assets. It went from 14% to 17%. And that's a really good representation of the DuPont formula.